Um, working with the Secret Service was maybe my favorite part of this movie, when you really learn how much preparation, how much dedication, how much knowledge these guys have, and what they do on a daily basis. Thousands of them. Not just in America, but here in Mexico, you know, and I mean Mexican, you know, Secret Service here, and in every country, you realize how much work they do to protect us so that we can do this. And so much of it we don't hear about. And, you know, for instance, the, 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 the two main guys who were, who were um, training me and, and, and um, spending time with to get you know, their headspace, one of them had a deep gash down here, a big gash from here to here, where he was slashed in a fight with, with, a, with a terrorist. The other one had shot in here and almost died. Again, both times engaging terrorists. And, and I got a lot from listening to them. By the way, two of the nicest, most mellow, humble souls you could ever meet. So dedicated though, one of them even had the motto of the Secret Service tattooed in his gun, right? But when they start talking about those guys, those guys that they fight, and those guys that would hurt the people of their country, or have hurt their colleagues, or have hurt them, or the loved ones, or the particular officials that they serve, you see this, that's when they come alive. And that's when you go, oh my God, I wouldn't want to mess with these guys. They're, they're incredibly tough. Um, and, and then we used, so, so I want, that's what I thought. That's the thing that I took, that's what I wanted to take into Mike Banning, was that almost, almost if you're forced to, you become darker than the villain himself. And I love that, I love that notion. Um, and we spent a lot of time gleaning information from them as well about how to set up this initial attack. And, and then also, what is protocol? What happens in the crisis room? What happens in the White House when you go in there? What do you do? How do you keep an audience fascinated? Because it's a really interesting process. You go in, you check on everything, you know? What's surveillance? What are the, what's going on with the air vents? How do you establish outside lines of communication? How do you assess the enemy capability? How do you get ammo? Um, and, and, and then how do you start forming a plan? All of these things that are actually really cool to, 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 to get involved with and know what's the purpose of this? What's counterterrorism? You know, the cat and mouse game. Um, so in that, and then in free time, I, I didn't, because I, I produced a movie as well, so we were always, you, you're working as a producer, and then you're doing dialect sessions, and then you're training at the gym, and then you're, you're at the chiropractor for your injuries, <laughs> and then you're training with all the stunt guys, and we spent a lot of time developing the script. I mean, I would be calling the director at two in the morning, going, I'm trying to wake up, I've got a great idea, check this out. Okay, when this book, he's like, dude, what, really? Um, so, and then, after all that, you gotta go and actually perform. So, there was always that, Antoine had this thing for me, which was, bad intentions, bad intentions, Jerry, which would always just click me back in to, to play my band. But, but what I did, I stayed out on a lake, a beautiful lake, and, um, if, I, and sometimes I would do, we had a little boat, and we'd go out on a boat, Sometimes we would work out there, we'd develop in the script, or I would just go out there and sit, you know, work, you know, or chill. It's amazing. I just, I can't really tell you, whenever I think of this lake, I'm like, it is so beautiful. And we had a tree, this is totally irrelevant to the movie, by the way, but we had a tree in our garden. And while I was there, it was struck twice by lightning. Both times we were there, and it was hairy as fuck. Crazy. It burned for a day. First time it burned for 24 hours until we had to get somebody to come put it out. <coughs> Just for your general information. <laughs> Shall we send Antoine some Red Bull because of your calls, your morning calls? What's that? Shall we send Antoine some Red Bull? He might need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, by the way, but that's something I'd love to just talk about it for a second. It's the one, Antoine Fuquan, the most amazing director. You know, director training day. He's, there was nobody better, better for this. And actually, when I got the script, I was already working with him on another couple of projects. And this suddenly was here, and I thought, oh my God, this is, this is Antoine written all over it. And, and, um, and, and I took it to him, we said, you know what, let's go, let's just dive in right now. And, and I had such, a, I was on the phone with him yesterday, and we were like, okay, man, I've got another one for you. And he's like, I've got one for you. And we just want to do everything together right now. He is, 
it's great to work with a director when you're making a movie that is you know, it's a lot of action. One, the guy was a golden gloves boxer. He's so tough, and yet he's so sensitive. And he is somebody, if you ever want to talk about a hero's journey, my favorite movie of all time is Apocalypse Now, and it's his favorite movie too. And that is the absolute darkest journey of a hero into his own mind and down that river into the unknown territory of, of ourselves. Um, and, and he's so incredible with actors. And we managed to get this. You know, for me as well, getting Antoine on board, I knew and be able to get the likes of Aaron Eckhart and Morgan Freeman followed, and Melissa Leo's. Okay, so, so we're doing it. We made an action movie, but we made an action movie with two Oscar winners, two Oscar nominated actors. And then on top of that, you have, you know, uh, you have Dylan McDermott, Radha Mitchell, you have Ashley Judd, uh, Rick Yoon. We, ju we just amassed this formidable cast. And what that really helped us to do was to make those roles incredibly human and incredibly believable. Because I sometimes want to, is it an audience watching the movie? Are they believing it's happening? Or is it important that, that they see the people in the movie believing that it's happening? And, and if you have such incredible actors, then you're there. And I, and I really thought they, they did such an, an, an incredible job in this movie. They took it, you know, it, it, it's an action movie. But to me, it transcends that and it becomes something way more meaningful um, and, and resonant and, and, and actually emotional. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> it's great. It's the Red Bull. La última pregunta que es de Abraham López de Prisión.com. Hola, Gerard. Hola. ¿Qué cualidades crees que debe tener un presidente hoy en día para que la gente que está a su alrededor quiera protegerlo de la manera que sucede en la región? Characteristics of the. What, what do you think it takes for? Can I try? Yeah. What do you think it takes uh, for a president? Or what does it take for people to actually care about a president as much as they care about the president in this movie? Which are the features that a president needs to have so people actually love him that much? That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, an interesting question because, you know, what we tried to do was give our president, not make him a. Not make him a, a pushover in any way. We wanted to make this guy one show that he was a fighter. We put a boxing scene in there at the beginning. To um, you know, we wanted to show a guy who had some some balls, who was fit, who was athletic, and yet who was a decent man with with integrity. Somebody that you got to know. You saw the tragedy in his life. You saw that he really is trying to deal with his son, and you see that he's very fair in politics. Because we didn't want to create a situation there where you're muddying up, you know, his, his personal beliefs. We wanted to create, you know, a, a, a modern, young, kind of vital politician. But what I do believe, and it's interesting because, to me, what's more important than what you, what the, what, what are the attributes that your president needs for you to care about? In some ways, isn't important. I think because he's your president. And I think that, you know, you as Mexicans, you, 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 you grow up, from the day you're born, you hear about your institutions and your president and those posts. Whether you love or hate that person, they're your president. They serve you, they protect you. It's the same with, you know, it's the same in Britain. It's the same, you know, whether people agree with their, with, you know, whether they love or hate Obama. Nobody wants to see Obama with a gun to his head or in this situation. Nobody wants to see their, you know, when John F. Kennedy died, not everybody agreed with Kennedy's politics, but when he was shot, it was awful. 
for everybody. It was a terrible, terrible day. So, so in that respect, I wonder. And, and tell you something else. I was in, um, I was in South Africa, and I walked into a radio station. And as I walked in, the television was on, and it said Margaret Thatcher died of a stroke. Now, I'm from Scotland. I don't know if you guys know any of the history of what happened when Margaret Thatcher was in power, but the Scots hated her. I hated her. What she did to Scotland. And yet, when I saw this, I was overcome with emotion because I have so much emotional attachment to, to that. And, and at the same time, I can appreciate she was a great woman. So that's, that's what I, that leads me to, to a, another point, which is why I think this movie touches at something very deep. And people might say, well, it's about America. It, it is about America, but it could just as easily be about Mexico. It could just as easily be about the 7-7 bombings in London. It could be about an attack in France, Spain, whatever. It's The fact is, it's an attack on our institutions by terrorists, by people who would do us harm. And, um, you know, and, and yeah, and just that, that, I think that just, that it's about our freedom. It's about the fragility of our, of our freedom, and, and, and I think that we, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, attachment to, to those to those posts, whether you like the person or not. Very few people would say, "Yeah, president died." I hope. <laughs> Muchas gracias a todos ustedes por habernos acompañado, Gerard. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.